even being 18 years old, I wouldn't have known how to cry out to God, how to receive salvation or even, you know, have Jesus be Lord of my life. Kind of walk me through just so that if there's other people out there looking for that type of experience. What was that? Did you have some people already kind of talk to you beforehand? Did you have an example of that? Or did you just feel like, God, if you're here and then boom, all of a sudden you walk through that whole process on your own. What was that like? Yeah, that's a great question. So in Romans 10 verse 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when I got kicked out of college, my business coach, who was actually training me in supplement sales while I was doing personal training, he was a spirit filled believer. And uh, I didn't know what any of that meant. I, all I knew is like, oh, he's a Christian. I kind of just put like the same label on every Christian. Like they're a Christian. Yep. They go to church. They probably wear a button up and khakis. That's kind of what I thought when it came to like Christians. You know, they I put them all in the one category. And uh, anyway, he started pouring into me. When I got kicked out of college, I called him. His name was Mike. And I said, hey, Mike, um, I can't go home. I know if I go home, my family will mock me for being a failure. And uh, basically, I had, a, I had a rough childhood growing up. So I, I knew it wouldn't be good if I went home. I knew I was supposed to stay in Iowa because even though I didn't know how to put words to it, I knew God had something for me there. But I, I didn't know how to explain that. Kind of like what you said, I, I was agnostic, borderline atheist. So I, I didn't know how to explain any of that. But Mike took me under his wing and he started sharing the word with me. And the Bible says that God's word is like a seed. And the sower sows the word. And as you sow the word, some sow, others water that will come across your path. They'll water the seed that's been sown. And it says, God brings the increase when the time is right. So Mike began to sow the word into me as he trained me in sales. And he began to teach me what the Bible said. And I started to realize all these odd correlations that anytime something happened in my life, Mike would always quote a scripture. And be like, oh, that happened. You know, the Bible says this. Oh, this about money. Did you know the Bible says this? Oh, you're having these issues with a relationship. You know, the Bible says this. And I started to piece together over about six months that the mm -hmm. Bible very quickly had every answer that I needed in life. Even though I didn't necessarily believe in Jesus yet, I realized the Bible has all the answers. And that was just from him sharing the gospel with me. And then over that six month period, um, he actually asked me if I wanted to give my life to Jesus. And at that time, I, I had faith enough in my heart to, to receive him. And I realized this thing was real. And when I actually called on the Lord, Mike led me to the Lord. He baptized me and I went all in for God after that. Wow. And, and did you have a desire to read the Bible at that point? Because it kind of sounds like scripture was kind of that inception. And I know for me, I, I was just kind of like, why do people read this Bible over and over again? Like no other book, do you like open it every day and like, what's it got to say today? Like, that's just weird. So I was like, you know what? I'll read it front to back and then I'll figure it out. I ended up accepting Jesus when I got the Bible. They were like, you want, you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? And I was like, bro, why didn't you tell me this like a week ago? I would have said yes a week ago if I would have known. Yeah. Did you have a desire to read the Bible that came from that guy kind of sowing those seeds? I did after I got born again. Before, I mean, I would kind of like discipline. This is a fun fact. So because he was a businessman, I'm sure everybody that listens to this is familiar with John Maxwell, especially if you're a Christian, great leadership. Uh, he teaches a lot of business leadership from a Christian faith perspective. And Mike gave me a Max or a John Maxwell devotional. And so I would read these devotionals about being a better man, being a better leader. And he always had scripture in there and referenced the Bible. And one day a scripture that popped out to me with, was Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and everything else basically that you're looking for in life will just be added unto you. You won't have to go around like the rest of the world does and try to get this, try to get that. I like how my pastor says it. The whole world gets all they can and then they can all they get and then they sit on the can. You don't have to live life like that when you actually are seeking God's kingdom. And it kind of clicked for me. It might've been the first time I received revelation. And I realized this is why Mike is different. He just seeks God's kingdom first. So if I do things for God's kingdom, maybe God will bless me like he blesses Mike. And then after that, it kind of clicked and I began to actually enjoy reading the Bible. <laughs> That's so interesting. It, it reminds me a little bit of, I was just reading about David's life. I love people's stories. This is why I interview reading about someone in the Bible is kind of like an interview like this. And, and David's carrying the ark and bringing it basically back to his house. And I remember, you know, someone touched it and when it was going to fall and they died. Right. And he was like, mm -hmm. I'm not putting this in my house. I'm putting it in someone else's house. And then what it said is like that house was blessed, like where the Lord was because it was in that person's household. They were blessed. And it says three months later, later, David's like, 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get that back and bring it back over here now. And then that's when he talks about you'll build a house for me of cedar and and it just again I looked at it and I was like, man, David's not that much different. Now again, I'm not anyone's pastor, so no one rip on me for this. But I was like, he the Lord was blessing that guy's house, and he was like, yo. Three months later, he was like, I know I I got upset three months ago, but I see the blessing of the Lord on this person's home. I mm-hmm. want that in my home, and I I I believe that now is everyone has access to the Holy Spirit through Christ's death and resurrection. So I just think that was so cool and, and how that goodness of God leads people to repentance and how it's not just us just overcoming difficulty, but oftentimes God will use, ble- like this is a blessing to this guy. Hey, he's really putting the Lord first and I see his life prospering. I wouldn't mind some of that in my life. I just think it's really cool, man. So thank you for that example. 